Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Advent. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Ricardo de Silva. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends, today we enter into the third week of Advent. And we are reminded in the reading today to have no anxiety, to worry for nothing. So it's perhaps a good time as we come to Advent to think about that. Lord God, your church joyfully awaits the coming of its Savior, who enlightens our hearts and dispels the darkness of ignorance and sin. Pour forth your blessings upon us as we journey together this Advent. Their light reflect the splendor of Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has cast out your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear evil no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, do not fear, O Zion, let not your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst. A warrior who gives victory, he will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing as on the day of festival. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Shout. And sing for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Shout and sing for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the walls of salvation. Shout and sing for joy, for grace in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the nations, proclaim that his name is exalted. 
Shout and sing for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be known to all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitant of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Shout and sing for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brethren, rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, rejoice. Let all men know your forbearance. The Lord is at hand. Have no anxiety about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has sent me to preach good news to the poor. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, the multitudes asked John, What then shall we do? And he answered them, He who has two coats, let him share with him who has none. And the one who has food, let him do likewise. Tax collectors also came to be baptized and said to him, Teacher, what shall we do? And he said to them, Collect no more than is appointed you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what shall we do? And he said to him, Rob no one by violence or by false accusation, and be content with your wages. As the people were in expectation, and all questioned in their hearts concerning John whether perhaps he were the Christ, John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming, the thong of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire, his winnowing fork in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So, with many other exhortations, he preached good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Joy hits us quite literally between the lines this week. If we're paying attention, every single one of the readings calls us to joy. Shout for joy, O daughter. Rejoice with all your heart, says the prophet Zephaniah. Joy carries also into our psalm. Sing and shout for joy. Great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Our second reading tells us to be happy. For when the Lord is very near, there are no reasons to worry or be anxious. And then in the gospel, we hear that John will announce the good news of the coming of the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. But these readings are no coincidence. We have also reached the halfway point of our Advent journey. 
Our joy is building to the crescendo that will echo from churches on Christmas Eve. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. The birth of our Savior is upon us. Shout for joy, O Israel. And this Sunday, in many parishes, even the priest's vestments reflect this reprieve. Sadly, we don't have roast rose vestments at our disposal this year. I'm a little sad not to have occasion to wear pink on the sanctuary in my first advent as a priest. But there may be something to staying with the customary purple prescribed by the church for this penitential time of advent a season focused on our conversion and readiness to meet the Lord when he comes. Because even though the readings today call for joy, we are not let off the conversion hook this week, as I will later return to in our gospel. A little cognitive dissonance in what you see and what you hear this week can be helpful. We tend to think of joy and happiness in an almost frivolous sense, a time for laughs and giddiness. But that is not Christian joy, says Pope Francis. Joy does not mean living from laugh to laugh. No, it's not that. Joy is not entertainment. No, it's not that. It is something else, the Pope says. Christian joy is peace, peace that is deeply rooted, peace in the heart, the peace that only God can give. This is Christian joy. It is not easy to foster this joy. Perhaps it's good for us to stay with the Pope's words as we near the end of a second year blighted by the COVID-19 pandemic, brimming with even more death, devastation, and a higher global poverty index than last year. If we are looking for happiness in a familiar sense, then we'll likely be bitterly disappointed. I always struggle to see how Mary, as a young girl and a single parent, could heed the angel Gabriel's call to rejoice in the favor God has shown her. How could she glorify the Lord, proclaim God's greatness in her life, and have her soul filled with joy? Was she always this joyful? We don't know. But we do know that her joy was carried through in her son, who, even knowing his end, leaped for joy in his mother's womb when she visited her cousin Elizabeth and was able to tell his disciples that their sorrow would turn to joy. A rejoicing that appears never to have left them, and which they communicated in their ministry. Wherever the disciples went, the Acts of the Apostles tell us, there was great joy. And Pope Francis reminds us, even amid persecution, they continued to be filled with joy. The newly baptized eunuch went on his way rejoicing, while Paul's jailer and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. Why should we not also enter into this great stream of joy, the Pope asks? Another good question to ask ourselves. What prevents you from joining in that joy that Mary knew when she first learned that she would bear the Son of God, even in her precarious predicament? Perhaps our gospel can help us answer this question. Upon hearing the call to conversion, John's followers ask him what they must do to follow in the ways that lead to their salvation and ultimately bring fulfillment. It is telling that John's advice is so practical. 
Give away the extra clothing you have but don't need. Don't be greedy. Act with fairness and justice. Charge the right price. Don't intimidate others. These are very concrete ways of acting that, however ancient the words of John may be, apply to us today. In fact, just listen again to what he says to the police or the military forces of the time. Don't intimidate. Don't extort people unjustly. Don't accept bribes. And lest we should criticize all that comes with the trimmings of modern Christmas traditions, I think there is one wonderful thing that endures each Christmas wherever we are. Christmas is a time for giving, a time when we are called to think about one another, to offer ourselves in service, to give ourselves to each other in family and with our friends. The problem with the, commer the commercialization of Christmas, though, is that it limits this giving time. It is only a December thing. For the Christian, as John reminded us in the gospel we heard from Luke, the giving spirit should endure. We are to love our neighbor always. That is the joy that is everlasting and that transforms us into a joyful people for all time. And it is the joy of which we are reminded this week. And we see a glimpse of that joy that will come at Christmas. Jesus himself. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead, and is seated into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As we prepare our hearts to celebrate the birth of Christ, our joy, let us turn to the Father with our prayers and petitions. For Pope Francis and the Church throughout the world, that all will be blessed with God's joy as they continue their mission of proclaiming the gospel to the ends of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer for all who gather to celebrate the Eucharist today, that we may rejoice in the fullness of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. For all who have lost their sense of joy or whose faith has grown weary, that their love of Christ will be renewed as they prepare to celebrate his birth. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. For our own parish community, that our Advent preparations will help each of us draw closer to God, in whom our joy is complete. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. 
for the sick, the suffering, those experiencing homelessness and the hungry, that even in the turbulence of their lives, they may experience joy and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our Father, you have made us your sons and daughters in Jesus Christ. Help us to live by that truth as we await God's coming. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of Christ's name, for our good and the poor of our church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed so long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these sacred mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, 
he took the Passover cup, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Save us, Saviour of, of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious masses, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Butti, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. We ask your mercy, Lord, that this divine food may cleanse us of all our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And let us now bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen so that you who now rejoice with devotion at our Redeemer's coming in the flesh may now be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and be with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.